Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have x squared minus 3 equals the square root of x plus 3, and we're going to be looking for the x values. Alright, so I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for the first method, I'll be using a brute force method, square both sides, eliminate the radical, and from here we get the following, x to the fourth minus 6x squared, remember a minus b quantity squared, plus 9 equals x plus 3. Let's put everything on the same side, 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. This kind of looks factorable, doesn't it? Let's try to factor it by grouping. Take x squared out, x squared minus 6, and then take a negative 1 out, you get x minus 6. Uh-oh, it's not factorable. Too bad. Okay, then you could use the quartic formula. Good luck with that. Or maybe use the rational root theorem, right? Should we call it RRT? Maybe. So how do we use, use the... Uh, I was going to say irrational theorem. Okay, how do we use the rational root theorem? We look for factors of 6, the constant term, right? Factors of 6, okay, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 6. We have 8 candidates, but guess what? To keep a long story short, I'm going to tell you what it is. x equals negative 2 works. Yay, awesome, and you can easily check that, right? This implies that x plus 2 is a factor. This is the factor theorem. Because in order for x to be, in order for x equals negative 2 to be a solution, we have to have x plus 2 equals 0, right? So uh, that means x plus 2 is a factor. And we can arrange the terms so that x plus 2 is always a factor. So like this. Start with x to the fourth, and then add 2x cubed to it. And the, the reasoning behind this is if you take out an x cubed, you're going to get x plus 2. So we know x plus 2 is going to be a factor. Make sense? But you don't have x cubed in the original equation. So this I'm, I'm talking about the quartic. So what can I do? I can just eliminate it. So add, subtract, add, subtract, so on and so forth. Subtract 2x cubed. Now it's balanced, but negative 2x cubed must be followed by negative 4x squared. Again, for the same reason. And then, of course, I have negative 6x squared, so I have to follow this by a negative 2x squared, or minus 2x squared. And now it's balanced, but negative 2x squared must be followed by negative 4x, so that x plus 2 is a factor. But we only have negative 1x, so we have to add 3x, and finally, when we add the 6, we're going to be good to go. Now we're going to be grouping these, so th these two, these two, and these two. This is going to be negative 2x squared times x plus 2. This is negative 2x times x plus 2. And this is 3 times x plus 2. If you do this correctly, you're going to get a common factor. If you don't, you won't. So x plus 2, we can take out and get x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay, we got a cubic. Cubic formula, uh, you don't need to do that. Because if you... Pay attention to the cubic. The sum of the coefficients is 0. It's a special cubic, right? 1 plus 3 is 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. They balance out. So that means x equals 1 is a solution, right? Remember, we talked about this before. So what can I do? Here's the same thing. Let's break down x cubed. And then we need minus x squared. But then we need another minus x squared. And then we need an x, and then we need a negative 3x, and plus 3. And this gives us x squared times x minus 1. Or you could do long division if you want. If you like it, definitely. And this is going to give us x minus 1 as a common factor, obviously. And this is going to be written as x minus 1 times x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Great. So we were able to factor the cubic as well, which is nice. Now we have a quadratic, which is easy to solve by the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and solve the quadratic because we know x equals 1 is a solution, but what about the other ones? So x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, uh, minus 4ac, but that is just 1 plus 12. 
can I just write it as 13? I hope you don't mind. It's just the quadratic formula. Easy, you can do it. But this gives us two solutions. And guess what? One of the solutions is not good because when you plug it in, it's not going to work. All right? So you can call that an extreme solution, whatever you want. But the only one that works from here is going to be x equals 1 plus root 13 over 2. Radical, but good. What about x equals 1? We said that x equals 1 is a solution. Guess what? That is also an extraneous solution. And the reason why we get extraneous solutions is because we squared both sides. And let me give you the original equation. So you can kind of check. If you substitute 1 on both sides, you get 1 minus 3 and the square root of 1 plus 3. This is 2. This is negative 2. So that problem is eliminated. Well, I shouldn't say eliminated, but it just causes another problem. That uh, issue is eliminated when we square both sides because negative 2 squared and 2 squared are equal, but negative 2 and 2 are not equal. Make sense? So those are called extraneous solutions. Okay. So that means we only have this one and the x equals negative 1, the good old one, right? So we have two solutions, basically. Negative 2 and 1 plus 13 over 2. At the end, we're going to look at a graph, so hopefully it'll make more sense. But now, we need to talk about the second method. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. And the second method is obviously nicer, because the first one is not that nice and kind of painful, and so on and so forth. So, this is our original problem. I'm going to set both of these equal to y, and hopefully you know y. From here, I get two things. x squared minus 3 equals y, and x plus 3 equals y squared. Of course, I'm squaring both sides here, right? But that is kind of interesting, right? I can do the following. I can basically isolate the 3 from both of these equations. So the first one gives me x squared minus y equals 3, if you just switch them around. And the second one gives me 3 equals y squared minus x. Since they're both equal to 3, then these two things are equal. I know I kind of made it a little confusing, maybe. Uh, you could also uh, isolate the x in the second one and subtract these equations. Same thing. But I'm going to set them equal to each other, which is kind of more fun. x squared minus y is equal to y squared minus x. Let's put everything on the right-hand side because y squared is positive there. Plus y. And then minus x squared minus x equals 0. I probably want to write it like this, x, y squared and x squared together. So let's go ahead and factor this, y plus x, y minus x, from difference of two squares. y minus x is just 1 times y minus x. And this is equal to 0. I know we kind of did something crazy because we had a single variable, now we turned it into two variables like a system, but don't worry, this is going to make it easier. y minus x take out, y plus x plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. From here we get two results, y equals x, or y plus x plus 1 equals 0. Let's go ahead and take a look at them separately. y equals x means what? Well, we know that, what do we know? y is equal to x squared minus 3. So if y is equal to x squared minus 3, let me rewrite it here. And if y is equal to x, then I can just replace y with x. That gives me x equals x squared minus 3, or x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. And this gives us two solutions. Remember those radicals from the first method? 1 plus root 13 over 2, and 1 minus root 13 over 2. But this is extraneous, so we're going to throw that away and take this one. From here, we get the following. y is equal to x squared minus 3, so x squared minus 3 plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Hey, the sum of coefficients is 0, so x equals 1 is a solution, but this is easy to factor. Come on, you can do it. x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0, or quadratic formula x equals 1, x equals negative 2, x equals 1 is extraneous, so we end up with x equals negative 2 as the other solution. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're just going to wrap it up. All right, so these two functions I graphed for you, the radical and the quadratic. Obviously, one of them is a parabola, the other one is a radical, which has kind of like a half of a parabola, but it's sideways, and they intersect at two points, which are the two points that we just talked about, and you can see the coordinates here. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.